So I believe that every single person who experienced sexual violence or victimization has the capacity to heal, to survive, and to thrive. What that looks like for me is um, staying in this career, and continuing on as a professor and a researcher and a teacher while being open about that label. It meant no longer hiding. It meant no more shame, no more guilt, understanding that I was 0% responsible for this. Um, but also acknowledging um, some of the long-term effects. I still have moments where I'm really sad. I still experience flashbacks. Um, and I'm okay with that. I've come to accept that that's a part of the journey. I think that the journey is lifelong. I think the journey always continues. But I know how to walk that journey. I know how to deal with those things as they come up now. And that's part of resilience. Um, the other part of this that I see is just the hope that you can come out the other side of this and be strong and not be ashamed of this and be able to say, me too. Alyssa Ackerman experienced rape at age 16. She was at a party with a friend. I was sort of a loner, quiet, and there was a young man there who made a point to befriend me and asked me if I would go for a walk on the beach with him. And I said, okay, uh, though my gut originally told me not to go. Um, I went anyways. And um, after about 20 minutes of walking, I realized that we had walked pretty far. It was late at night. It was a really calm night, beautiful night. Um, and I realized that I didn't feel very safe and that I wanted to turn around and go back. Um, and at that point, it got very violent. I didn't tell anybody, I didn't tell my parents, I didn't tell the police, I didn't tell a friend. But when I went away to college, I figured it was time for a new start and that I could just move past it. Um, and very quickly I realized that that was not what was happening. I was engaging in a lot of self-harming behavior. Um, I didn't go to class. Um, I was an invited walk-on uh, for the softball team at the institution that I went to and I was cut from the team. Uh, and by, before Thanksgiving of my freshman year, I left school and I moved closer to home um, and just continued to remain silent for many, many years. It took 15 years of deafening silence to finally and fully disclose what happened to me. Speaking out was the most empowering thing I have ever done. It was really hard at first to stand openly with the survivor label, but it has been my experience that disclosure lifts the weight of shame off your shoulders and it sets you free. So there's two major sides to this, right? It's very, uh, it's very different getting up in front of a group of people and telling the story, but the personal work you have to do on your own um, is the hardest work. Um, when I started this journey two years ago, I was a very different person than I am now. I was, I, I had a wall up. Um, I was not comfortable in large groups of people. Um, always very aware of my surroundings. The way that I wore my clothing was sort of protective. I always had um, a button-down shirt with a sweater vest over it, always. Um, and I've sort of shed those layers. Um, I look much younger now than I did two years ago, and it's just like it's been a physical change externally, um, but internally as well. And it's been so rewarding, both personally and professionally, and I've seen so much growth in me as an individual and in the work that I do and the communities that I am now part of because I've opened up about it. And I finally realized after 15 years, 16 years, um, that I had nothing to be ashamed of the entire time. Alyssa is a criminal justice professor and a nationally renowned sex crimes researcher. Her advocacy work centers on survivor storytelling. So I've been teaching classes on sexual violence since 2008, 2009. Um, and in the first several years that I was teaching, I would never have thought about telling my class. Uh, they asked me why I did this work, and I said that I took an interest in class in graduate school. Um, and then in the summer of 2014, um, a student asked the first day of class, and I said, 
because of personal experience. Um, and that changed the dynamic of the class and um, it made a lot of students open up that they realized that I understood. I have students that are disclosing to me all the time. And for many years, I would just say, you know, well, I can help you find the resources that you need. Uh, but I felt like a fraud. And I felt like I could really help a lot of people and help myself if I just finally started speaking up. And so I did. My rape took place on a beach, uh, on a rocky beach. And for a long time, it was difficult for me to go to the beach. Um, it isn't anymore. I still find such peace in hearing the waves and watching the sunset or the sunrise. Um, but every single time I go to the beach, I put down 12 rocks in the sand. Um, I've done it since that night. Um, I don't really know why, but it's just something that brings me peace. Um, and it doesn't matter where I am in the world, I do that. I live in a part of the country that is just exquisite. It's beautiful, it's green. We have, uh, you know, beautiful water. We have mountain views. Um, and I don't take for granted that I have that here. It's been a huge part of my own healing journey. And so I spend a lot of time in nature. I get to um, drive over a beautiful bridge and look at the water every single day. Um, and I take time every week. I take a day off of work every week to spend with my children and my wife because family, I wouldn't have been able to take this journey without my family. Um, so I don't take for granted that I have this beautiful life outside of this work, um, both with nature and both with the people who love me. Um, and I make sure to tend to that as often as I can. Um, what I've learned on this journey is um, that Human beings have incredible resilience and incredible strength. Um, and I find that I draw my strength and resilience partially from returning to spirituality. It's what it is. It's feeling a oneness or a closeness with myself um, and just having an hour or two a week where I get a reprieve um, from this work that can be very hard work emotionally very tiring work emotionally and it just gives me that pause in my week to reflect on why I do this work, why it's important to me and who I am and who I want to be. And I would never walk away from this work. It is far too important to me and I see the power behind being a professional survivor and being able to offer that hope and strength to somebody else. Alyssa Ackerman is a beacon of light and hope in the movement towards a world free of sexual violence. She brings academic integrity, a profound commitment to uncovering and understanding trauma in herself and others, and unyielding kindness to every endeavor she embarks upon. The Powerful Voices Project is grateful to know Alyssa and to travel this journey along her side.